Our worship service is beginning. I invite those of you at home to light a candle during the prelude so that we may all share in the light of Christ during this time. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Thank you, Phyllis. I'm Gwen Hampton, and I am your liturgist of the day. <laughs> we uh, want to welcome all of you to our worship service through our Facebook live streaming. We have a few staff members and essential volunteers in the sanctuary, so we are really glad that you're with us, those of you here and those of you who are worshiping at home or wherever you might be, because now you can see us if you're in Timbuktu. It would be helpful if you would like our live stream so we know that you are watching. Kathy? Good morning, St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and for those of you that are in here, it is wonderful to see you, and for those of you that are uh, Watching us outside of the sanctuary, thank you for being with us. It truly is a way that we can come together through the gift of technology and be in worship together. Um, this is World Communion Sunday. It is the Sunday that uh, churches all around the world will be celebrating and observing that in the body of Christ, there is one body, all of us together. And Marcia Shoemaker will talk a little bit more about World Communion later on in the, in the service. But I will say that the um, scripture that Gwen will be reading later this morning from Galatians, that is a scripture that is thought to have been part of the very first baptismal covenant um, during the <clears throat> first century church. And it talks about in the body of Christ, there is no east, there is no west, one body. And that's what we come today to celebrate. Um, will you go with me to God in prayer? Oh, gracious and loving God, we do indeed give you thanks for this day that you have given us. We give you thanks that you have called us all together through the gift of technology to worship you. God, we know that we don't have to ask you to be in this place for whether we are in the sanctuary or in our own homes or wherever we might be as we are <clears throat> involved in this worship service, we know that you are with us because wherever we are, you are always there just waiting for us to turn to you. So instead, God, we ask that you help us to make that turn to you, to be fully present to you, to put away our distractions, our anxieties, our worry, to lay all of those aside so that during this time we can be fully present, so that during this time, during word, during song, during the gift of Holy Communion, that we experience the risen Christ so that as our service ends, 
we can proclaim, we have seen the risen Christ, and we have indeed been transformed. Amen. I will say, if you haven't already done so, now is a good time to go and make sure you have some type of bread or juice, bread and or juice for um, our communion, which will be later in the service. It's World Communion Sunday, so if you have French toast or pizza crust or a taco shell, um, all of those work fine. What's important when we <clears throat> receive communion is that we understand that these elements are sacred and special, and they have been set aside for this time. I invite you to stand um, if you so feel like standing. If not, rise in your uh, seats, and let's sing Gather Us In, 2236, or on your screen. Those of you at home, sing loudly, because those of us here with our masks on will be singing very softly. darkness vanished away see in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of the day gather us in the oak and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame call to us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light in the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new blood. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Now we will have the passing of the peace of Christ. St. Paul's United Methodist Church welcomes and extends our love to all persons, regardless of age, race, income, nationality, life experiences, sexual orientation, or gender identity. All are welcome into our family. You are invited to greet one another with sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. And also with you. And we ask those of you watching from home if you would share the peace of Christ with those with you.
Please remain standing as we join in our um, call to worship. It's printed in your bulletin or it will be on your screen. Around the world, people gather to break bread and pour wine. We gather with them in heart and mind. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. As part of that body, we join in unity. Around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. We need to share. Let us worship together. Let us share God's bounty. Let us pray. Let us sing. Let us celebrate one body in Christ. And join me as we read the World Communion Blessing. It's printed on an insert in your bulletin or it will be on your screen for those of you at home. And the table will be wide and the welcome will be wide and the arms will open wide to gather us in and our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough, and we will come unhindered and free, 
and our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame, and we will turn toward each other without fear, and we will give up our appetite for despair, and we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world, Holy, holy, merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And uh, at home, come up to the screen. We'll have children's time with wrinkles, and he brought Marsha with him. Children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread and cup, prayer and song. This is where children belong. Good morning. Oh. Hey, I'm kind of mad. What are you mad about today? Sure. Well, that's one of the rules that we have. We rules are for. Oh, the rules, the rules are to make us safe, okay? Well, there's a lot of, there's too many rules. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, all right. So you're complaining about the rules that we have to keep us safe because you know there is, you know, the Rona. We call it COVID-19, but you can call it the Rona. Okay, so we have the Rona, and so we have to be careful, so we have rules. And rules are not bad things. They seem bad to me. Well, they're not. They keep us safe. If we just, you know, said everybody could do everything they wanted, what would happen? I don't know. Maybe we would interrupt each other when we're talking. That could happen. That could happen. All right. So, we, I don't ever interrupt you, do I? I don't think that's ever going to happen. Okay. I, I try not to. Good for you. Okay. So, I'm not going to do that. But we have rules. And there's rules in the Bible. I know those rules. I know them all. Number one, we just begun. God should be thirst in our life. That's right. That's number one. And you know all of them? I know a song. Oh, no. You don't want to hear the song? It's kind of long, so we'll just skip that song for today. You want to know something, though? Rules help us be a group and do things as a group. And so today we're doing something really interesting as a group. What would that be? We are going to have World Communion. World Communion? The whole world? Yeah, really, the whole world is going to be taking communion today. <clears throat> and we're going to share together with people all over the world. That sounds great. You know that you share with people that you like, people that you love, people that are part of your family. You mean the whole world is my family? Yes, that's exactly what it means. The whole world is our family. Everybody that uh, loves Jesus and God loves and you know what God loves everybody so the whole world can participate and when we eat together we learn together we love together 
and usually we get along unless somebody tries to take my bone. Okay, that's true, but this is a great time. So uh, what do you think uh, about having World Communion today? I think it's great, and I know another song. Oh boy, okay. Well, you can sing this one, because it's shorter, right? <clears throat> Maybe, depends on how long I hold the last note. Okay. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, Yes, they'll know we are Christians, I are. Wait for it. Love. Thank you, thank you. Okay, that's a good song. Well, they'll know we are Christians by our love, and they'll know we are Christians today because we're going to share together in the meal that God has provided for us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you so much that we are one in your spirit, that we love you and you love all of us, and we love all the children that are with us today. Take care of them. Amen. Thank you. Our scripture reading today from the epistle is from Galatians Chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring heirs according to the promise. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. I give all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will share all my cares with you. This is the time in our service when we come together as a people of God to lift our joys and concerns to God, knowing that God does indeed want to hear all of them. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, we begin by, first of all, lifting up all of those who are suffering with COVID, uh, including <clears throat> our president and our first lady and all of the government officials that seem to have be dealing with COVID right now, uh, but we also lift up all of those who are unable to have the level of care that so many have gotten. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up all of those who have illnesses um, and upcoming surgeries. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up those who are traveling May they return safely, Lord, in your mercy. God, we take a moment now to lift up all of those things silently that are deep within our heart to you.
Lord, in your mercy. Will you go with me to God in prayer? O oh, gracious and loving God, you invite all who are weary to come and find rest. And we, the weary, have heard your invitation. Rarely have we needed rest in your unifying Holy Spirit more than we do on this World Communion Sunday. Gracious God, we are exhausted by the bitter partisan politics that divide family and friends. We are tired of the lack of civility that threatens our very way of life. God, we're tired of COVID and the natural disasters that seem to be springing up all over the world. But we ask that when we leave this service today, that you empower all of us to be ambassadors of kindness and agents of compassion to all those who are on our path. For God, you know of our weariness and you are the source of our renewal. Be patient with us, God. Although you have been through this many times, this is new for so many of us. And seven months seems like a long time but we know that every step of the way you are with us. God, we ask that you also <clears throat> let us feel your presence during the midst of this election season. Let us remember the difference between our selfish ways and the ways that you have proclaimed. God, teach us to speak with those that we, that we disagree with in ways that brings understanding and not division. Today on this World Communion Sunday, we rejoice as those barriers of race and gender and age and income and sexual orientation, gender identity and political affiliation, they all disappear as Christians around the world gather at one table, one body, sharing one common loaf. God, we are reminded on this day and every Sunday that we are not here to worship because we deserve to be here, but because we need to be here. God, you know what each of us are struggling with and what each of us needs. We just ask that you help us to open our hearts to receive those gifts that you give us, to receive the manna that you have put before us, to receive the blessing that we will have when we feast at your table. God, we come to worship, we pray, and then we go out to serve. We go out to serve in your name. Amen. The song, We Will Meet, was written early this spring as people were entering um, a, time, a season of COVID where we were separated on Sundays by worship um, or by the disease and yet separated in worship. It is also so fitting for this day, and I didn't realize it until this morning, that it was written by a Nor Norwegian man, a poet, the, the words were, and then it was put to this tune by Reverend John Bell, who was a Scottish hymn writer. And uh, so we are joined in spirit and in um, this song across the nations. We will meet when the danger is over. We will meet when the sad days are done. We will meet sitting closely together and be glad our tomorrow has come. We will join to give thanks and sing gladly we will join to break bread and share wine and the peace that we pass to each other will be more than a casual sign So let 
Let's make with each other a promise That when all we've come through is behind We will share what we missed And find meaning in the things that once troubled our mind Until then, may we always discover faith and love to determine our way. That's our hope and God's will and our calling for our lives and for every new day. Thank you, Twyla. That was a beautiful hymn for World Communion Sunday and um, the time that <clears throat> in which we are living. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Hebrew Bible. It is a scripture that really needs no introduction. It is one which many of you are familiar with. Um, it's various scriptures, readings from Exodus 20, which lays out what we have <clears throat> learned to call the Ten Commandments. Um, I'll be skipping some of the some of the verses within there. Um, I will remind you that the Israelites have been led out of captivity and they into the wilderness, and now they are on the verge of the Promised Land. Hear these words from Exodus twenty. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who brought you out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses God's name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to someone else. When all the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance. And Moses said, and, they, and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the awe of God upon you, so that you do not sin. My friends, this is the word of God. It is the story of the people of God. Will you go with me to God in prayer? O oh, gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. For you indeed are our rock and our redeemer. God, at this time I ask that you fill me with your spirit. Let it be your word, not mine that is heard. Let it be your word that lands in our hearts and leads us to transformation. Amen. 
Well, you all know these words. You knew them before I ever read them. Even for the people that are not part of the Christian or Jewish faith, they know these words, these words that have come to be known as the Ten Commandments. And some of you may be saying, oh no, another sermon on the Ten Commandments. I've heard them all my life. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't want to preach on the Ten Commandments. What new insights could possibly be said about something that is so ingrained in our culture? But then I heard someone reading these words early last week, and they hit me in a new, or maybe I should say, a more profound way. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. It wasn't, I am the Lord, the God of heaven and earth. It wasn't, I am the Lord, the God of all people and all creation. It wasn't, I am the Lord, the God of all that is, all that is to come, and all that has ever been. No, my friends, God said, I am the Lord, your God. I am the Lord, your God, the one who created you to be in relationship with me, the one who created you to be in relationship with one another. I am the Lord, your God. And then God said, let's talk about that relationship with me and with one another. What's it going to look like? Now remember, the Israelites had been living in captivity and oppression. They didn't have to figure out what to do. Pharaoh told them what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. But now they were free, and they had to learn what does it mean to live in freedom. They had to learn that freedom, that with freedom comes responsibility, and with freedom comes looking out for one another. Yes, the Israelites had to learn about living in community, and maybe we need a refresher. You see, to be clear, this scripture should not be understood as a strict list of laws that are given by God to the people to follow in blind loyalty or out of fear of retribution if they disobeyed. These <clears throat> rules shouldn't be seen as something we should or we shouldn't do so that we can win God's favor or to do or not do so that we will be saved. You see, my friends, God didn't say to the Israelites, do these things and then I will save you. No, God had already saved them. God took them out of captivity. God liberated them and set them free. And then God said, now that you are free, this is how we live in community. You see, following these commandments aren't about do these so God won't spite you down, but rather do these as a joyful response to being the people of God that have been set free. And my friends, this isn't just the story of the Israelites. It's our story. It's your story. It's my story. It's our story. And the story begins with us hearing God say to us, I am the Lord your God. One of the joys, one of the great joys of being a pastor is making that hospital visit when a member of the congregation has just had a baby. It's in, an incredible moment to hold a baby that is less than 24 hours old, to bless them, and then to spend time with the new parents. I vividly remember several years ago going to the hospital to see some first-time parents. The dad had run home to shower, so it was just the mom and the baby and I. The mom was holding the baby, and she was looking into her eyes with joy and wonder. And she told me, I don't ever want to put her down. I want her to know me. And then she asked me, do you think she knows me yet? And I said, yes, of course she does. You gave birth to her. She knows your heartbeat. She knows your voice. Yes, she knows you. And then she looked at this little girl and she said, I'm your mommy and I love you. I'm your mommy and I will always love you. 
I am your mommy. And you, you are my precious little girl. Now hearing her say those words brought tears to my eyes because she said them in such a loving manner. Yeah, I knew that that little girl was going to grow up knowing that she is loved. This mom later told me, she said, for probably two months, I told my little girl that every single day. And friends, that's exactly what we hear from God. I am the Lord, your God, and I want you to know me. I am the Lord, your God. When I heard these words early last week, I realized that way too often we make that a cognitive understanding of God and not a personal realization that God is our God. Yes, our being collective, but also our God being personal. You see, I am the Lord your God means we, God and each of us, are in a relationship together. And no other relationship should ever come before that. And God says, for this relationship to be all that God created it to be, you will have no other gods before me. Now, did you notice God didn't say, don't have any other gods, gods being little g. Don't have any other gods. God didn't say, don't have other things that are important in your life. But God did say, don't let any of those things, people, commitment, aspirations, or dreams come before my relationship with you. And friends, I have to ask us, do we put our relationship with the one who brought us out of slavery, the one who has led us through the wilderness and provided us manna when we thought we couldn't go another step, the one who liberates us with love and grace and mercy and forgiveness, the one who created us and breathed into us, is this the, rela is this the relationship that is at the forefront of our being? You see, it's the first thing that God said. I am the Lord your God. And friends, when we get that, when we really comprehend that, when we live like that, all the rest falls into place. Those other commandments become a natural flow from, from living in relationship with the Lord our God. You see, God laid out some basics of how to keep our relationship with God at the center of our lives. And then God added some so that we could live in community with one another, how to take care of each other. Because indeed, we were created for community so that God had to teach the Israelites. God has to teach us how do we live faithfully in a community with others so that all flourish. Now, did you notice in those scriptures that we read, God didn't say, be nice to one another, care for one another, be kind and compassionate. God didn't even say, wear a face mask when you are with one another. You see, God didn't have to say those things because when we truly live as one who is in relationship with God, those things are already present in our lives. Friends, we cannot have a deep and meaningful and personal relationship with God and not love our neighbors. It doesn't work that way. I heard someone once say, if you want to see an insight into a person's relationship with God, look at how they treat one another. You see, my friends, we were indeed created to be in community. In community first with God and then with others. And we are called to live faithfully in those relationships, called to live in ways that without words, people can see that God indeed is the Lord our God and that we are people of God, people of God who care for one another. And this week as I was reflecting on what it means to live as one who hears God whisper in our ears, just like that mommy did when she was holding her child, I am the Lord your God. What does that really mean? I heard a story from, from a clergy friend this week about a leadership conference she attended <clears throat> as a young adult who was involved with youth ministry. 
there were a group of them on this leadership retreat, and the facilitator of the group took them all outside, and they went into this forest area. And he broke them up into small groups, and it's right in the midst of this heavily forested area, and he said, brainstorm, come up with things that you can build in this forest. So they started thinking about the trees that were there and the things that they could build in the trees and they were getting very creative and he let them have a few minutes with that and they got in their <clears throat> larger group and shared. And then he took them a little ways down the road to a big open field, a field with absolutely nothing in it. And he asked them, what can you build here? And she said, people were quiet. There was silence. And finally somebody said, we can build anything. We can build anything here. And the facilitator went on to say that when you were in that forest area, you were only thinking about what you could build with what was there. But when you were in that open field, you thought about all the things that you could bring to that field and that there were absolutely no limits. And then the facilitator asked them, is your heart a heart that is filled with trees or is your heart one that is an open field so that God has this field in which to create? He asked them, will you be an open field for God? And as I listened to her story, I started thinking about what do we need to remove in our lives so that we can live as a person who has truly heard God say to us, I am the Lord your God. And to make this work with you, you can't have anything more important in your life than your relationship with me. What needs to be removed from our lives so that we can hear God say, tend to us and everything else will fall into place. As I've thought about this, I've been able to identify some things that need to be removed in my life because they don't reflect me hearing, I am the Lord, your God. I've got some grudges I've got to get rid of. I've got some impatience that I've got to get rid of. I probably have some unhealthy relationships that I need to work on. As I have looked at my life, yes, there are things that are keeping me from totally hearing or hearing fully and completely God say, I am the Lord your God. But as I've been reflecting, I've quickly realized that I don't always see my life very clearly. And so I have begun praying this week, God, show me what needs to be removed from my life so that I can truly be an open field for you to use in whatever way you need. Help me to see how I can more clearly be the one who hears I am the Lord your God. Friends, I do believe with everything I have that God has taken us out of captivity and has led us to freedom. And God has given us eternal life. It is the greatest gift we will ever know, but it comes with responsibility. Responsibility for us to help usher in God's kingdom, God's justice, God's freedom from oppression to all, to help usher in God's kindness and God's mercy and God's grace. And I wonder if maybe, just maybe, God may be asking you to remove some things or to rearrange some things so that your life reflects hearing God's claim of I am the Lord your God. Are there things that are keeping you from hearing God whisper that into your ear? Now I have to admit that sometimes as we think about God, we forget that we are made in God's image and we are not to make God into our image. Oh, that is so easy to do. We try to make God who we want God to be. 
a God that fits into our worldview. And sometimes the things that are in our field reflect our thwarted worldview and not God's. And I think that's why God, in his... <clears throat> in God's declaration of how to live in community and how to live in relationship, I think that's why God said, don't use my name wrongfully. You see, not using God's name wrongfully isn't about cussing and saying the GD word when you hit your thumb on a hammer. Oh no, that would be way too easy. That's not what this commandment's about. Do you remember what God added to this when God said, do not use my name wrongfully? God said, I'm not going to acquit you for this one. Now see, I don't really think that God gets that bent out of shape, that gets, God gets bent out of shape enough to not forgive us when we spew out bad words when we hit our thumb with a hammer. Now I am not condoning cussing. But I don't think that's what this commandment's about. It's much deeper than that. Not making wrongful use of God's names means not using God or God's word to oppress people or to clobber them. See, my friends, we did that with the Christian Crusades. We killed hundreds of thousands of people in the name of God. We took this land away from the indigenous people in the name of God. We held people of color in slavery in the name of God. And we have held women back in the name of God. We've used the name of God to oppress and to take away the rights of our gay, lesbian, and transgendered siblings. We see on the streets people using the name of God to claim white supremacy. And as you well know, there are people today who are using the name of God to say, don't wear a mask during this time of COVID. We're seeing people use the name of God to limit health care for people and to take away resources and fi finances and resources to people who so desperately need them. And friends, God says, don't do that. Don't use my name in your political game of trying to gain power. No, God says, love me and love your neighbor. And if you're not going to love your neighbor, if you're not going to protect your neighbor, don't use me as your reason. My friends, this is not a suggestion. It's not in the section of things that do this and it will make you a better person. No, this is in God's top ten. The only one in which God says, I won't acquit you on this one because you are using me to harm others. You are distorting who I am. For your personal gain. God says to us, I am the Lord your God. I am not a pawn in a political battle. Friends, I hope that tonight, <clears throat> as you lay your head on your pillow, you hear God whisper to you, I am the Lord your God. I have already saved you. I took you out of slavery and I have led you to freedom. Rejoice in that freedom, but don't ever forget, I am the Lord your God, and I love you dearly. It's in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And as our response to that, let us sing that beautiful hymn, Love the Lord Your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. Love the Lord your God with all that you have. 
on this <clears throat> world on this world communion sunday this is the place where god says i am the lord your god let me feed you let me meet you at this table and feed you Will you join me in the great thanksgiving for World <clears throat> Communion Sunday, printed on your screen or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created for yourself a world filled with diversity and blessed by your breath of life. Rainbow colors bloom in the spring. Summer breezes bring garden delight. And now as autumn comes our way, we see the work of your paintbrush upon every face and tree. In mercy, while we still held to the chains of our winter of pride and self-righteousness and historic <clears throat> egos, you loved us steadfastly, and you delivered us as babes to reflect the beauty and diversity of your grace, to bring us into a community of love and hope and peace. And so with all your people on earth, in every place where two or more are gathered in your name, and all the company of heaven who have gone before us, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat> Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus prayed that he might be one as he is, as he is one with you, and he asked that we might be known by the love that we have for one another. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And then he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, each and every one of you. Drink from this. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Gracious and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the life of Christ that we together as a new creation and a new community around the globe may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, help the body of Christ to be one. Help the left hand and the right hand work as one in ministry to all the world. Help the eyes and the ears sense your presence and coming of kingdom. Bring the blessing of the diversity of the body to bear fruit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is truly yours, almighty God, both now and forevermore. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. <clears throat> forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In just a minute, we'll be singing <clears throat> the first verse of Come to the Table. But I remind us all that this is not the table that is set at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. This is the table that is set by Jesus himself, who says, all, <clears throat> all are welcome at this table. My friends, there is nothing you can do to earn yourself a place at this table. And there is nothing you can do that keeps you away from this table. Jesus says, those who want to have a relationship with me, come, eat, let's dine together. As we sing this first verse, those of you at home, I encourage you to get your elements ready and we'll have them after the first verse. to the table of grace come to the table of grace this is God's table it's not yours or mine come to the table of grace I was talking to someone this week that, <coughs> that said I miss coming, going forward and receiving the elements. And so I encourage each of you right now to place your hands in that way that we have come as faithful Methodists have learned to do. Place your hands there and hear these words. My friends, this is the life of Christ given to you totally and completely. And this is the love of Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God. And while you're chewing, let us sing the second two verses. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of peace. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. And friends, now that we have been fed, the Lord our God is so good to feed us. But now that we have been fed, let us sing our response of being bread for the world. And after this, Marcia, if you'll come forward for the offertory prayer. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely put. Let us be one in the Lord. Now,
now it is time for our morning offering. And this morning being a special morning, there's also a chance for a special offering because today is uh, when we take an offering as United Methodists to do work all around the world. The offering that we receive goes uh, for scholarships for uh, ethnic minorities in both the United States and around the world. And it is with our offering and the offerings of others that last year we took about $650,000 in offering and um, making a big difference in helping people achieve their dreams. So if you want to contribute to the World Communion Offering, you can uh, send that offering in or uh, and designate it for World Communion. And all those gifts will be used to help people uh, further their education, realize their dreams, and fulfill their purpose in the name of God. And now let us pray. Great God, we come to you today offering our commitment to obey your rules and to obey your laws and to live our lives faithfully. We also offer our gifts, realizing that everything that we have comes from you. We pray that the offerings today on World Communion Sunday will be used to further your kingdom and that they will be a part of helping those in the world realize their hopes and dreams to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. God from whom all blessings flow, praise God all creatures here below, Alleluia, Alleluia, praise God the source of all our gifts, praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Amen. Friends, God has said, I am the Lord your God. And with that comes the responsibility of being a channel of God's peace. Our hymn of invitation and discipleship is number 2171, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. It is based on the prayer by St. Francis of Assisi, uh, which today, if we were Catholic, we would be celebrating the feast of St. Francis. Um, but <clears throat> we'll sing this song um, as part of that. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. 
where there is death, sleep in your carnival. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. This barren life let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved to, as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we see and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Amen. I think that's how God says. That's how we live in relationship, my friends. I'm going to send you out with a benediction that was written by St. Francis of Assisi. It is one of my favorite benedictions, but it is one that causes me to pause and go, ooh, do I really want that blessing? Receive this blessing, my friends, from St. Francis. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice and freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with just enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do and so that you can do what others claim can't be done and the blessing of god who creates redeems and sanctifies be upon you and all that you love and pray for this day and forevermore amen my friends Hear God say to you, I am the Lord your God. Be blessed. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call.
all of God's children said? Amen. Have a great week. Thanks for being with us this morning.